Alléluia. Alléluia. We bless the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for what he does in our lives. Uh, shall we pray? Father God, I bless you. We thank you for your goodness and for your grace and your mercy. We thank you that you help us, that you guide us, that you speak unto us, that you lead us. We pray, Lord God, that your hands be upon us. We pray that your hands be in us, that your heart be our heart, that your thought be our thought. For your word says, let the same mind that is in Christ Jesus be also in thee. So, Lord God, I pray that our heart be good ground, so we may receive the word of life in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So um, I, I want us to touch a little bit on the word that we have spoken last time on the, on the um, touch me again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I wanted us to, to talk about uh, the topic of her uh, salted with fire. But uh, I, I, I think I need uh, that. You good? Amen. Hallelujah. So the topic of her salted with fire, but the spirit of the Lord brings me back on the touch me again. Amen. So um, we will go rather in the book of Mark chapter 8. Uh, we will talk about that, uh, that topic. Okay. Mark, uh, Mark chapter 8. I believe we were in verse, uh, 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 start with verse 20. Amen. In the book of Mark chapter 8, we're going to start with verse 20. If you have it on the screen for us, you can bring it up. Uh, go ahead, please. So Mark, Mark chapter uh -huh, 8, 8, verse 20. Mm -hmm. And when the seven among 4,000, how many baskets full of fragments took he up? And they said, seven. And he said unto them, How is it that he do not understand? And he cometh to Bethsaida, mm -hmm. and they bring a blind man unto him, and besought him to touch him. Mm -hmm. And he took the blind man by the hand, and led him out of the town. Mm -hmm. And when he had spit on his eyes, mm -hmm. and put his hands upon him, he asked him if he saw out. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. After that, he put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up. And he was restored and saw every man clearly. And he sent him away to his house, saying, Neither go into the town, nor tell it to any in the town. And Jesus went out and his disciples into the towns of Caesarea, of Caesarea Philippi. <coughs> and by the way, he asked his disciples, saying unto them, Whom do men say that I am? And they answered, John the Baptist. But some say, Elias, and others, one of the prophets. And he said unto them, But whom say he that I am? And Peter answered and said unto him, Thou art the Christ. And he charged them that they should not, that they should tell no man of him. Hallelujah. And after he operates the miracle, he quickly goes and asks to the disciple that he had with him, who do people say that the Son of Man is? Uh, I, I'm not seeing if you see what I, I'm trying to point to, but... By the time the Lord gets into miracle and give the sight back to the man, he automatically asks to his disciple, after what you just saw, let me know what do people tell about me. I want you to pay attention to this one because it's important. They finish the miracle. He operates the miracle. He does the miracle in the blind man's life. He does something new in the blind man's life. And as they go out and as they walk out, the Lord now turns around and then speaks to his disciple on the heel of that miracle. And he asks them, what do people say that I am? The people who brought the blind man unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, for you, do you think that they knew who he was? Like how? Like what do you think that he, they knew that he was? Elijah? 
one of the prophets, because put it this way, the people who brought the blind man unto Christ, they had only one knowledge of him. They did not have the knowledge of him as the son of God. Hallelujah. Because until then, we see that the revelation has not been opened yet. Because after that, the Lord heals the blind man, and then the prophecy and the revelation comes through who? Peter. So it means until then, the miracle, sorry, the revelation of him being the, the Christ, amen, has not been known yet. So those who come unto him bringing the son of man, sorry, bringing the, the blind man, they come in one knowledge that he is one of the prophets. Are you following what I'm saying? Okay, hallelujah. He comes, there comes in one knowledge that he is one of the prophets. What I'm trying to say. Oftentimes, we confuse in the church um, the, the thing between the gifts and the fruit. And the Lord Jesus will make it clear by saying that the, we recognize them by their fruit. In other words, the gift of a person or the gift of a man of God, the gift of the woman of God, don't qualify her as a person coming from God. Does it make sense? Because when you read in the book of Matthew, the Bible says that uh, Matthew chapter 7, he talks about those, the prophet at the end of the day, who did come to the Lord and said, in your, in your, so it was not in the name. It was not in the name of Buddha. It was not in the name of Muhammad. It was in the name of the Lord Jesus that they did operate into signs, wonders, and miracles. Amen? But still, they were not able to understand the principle of God or to walk according to the will of God. For the word of God says that they were full of iniquity. Amen? So bringing back to this word of seeing the blind man being healed, I want to ask you, what do you think that the people who brought the blind men to the hands of Christ. What do you think that they had in mind? I, I know you don't know because the word of God does not tell us. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'm making an exercise. What do you believe? What do you think that they had in mind? Because it ought to be something either they saw or they knew in order to believe that Christ can do something for the one that is probably not the, not the, not, not the brother. I'm certain that it was people in the city, in the village, who saw the man who was blind for so long, and they understood that there was somebody who was in, in, in the neighborhood. Hallelujah. As somebody says, when God blesses your neighbor, it means he is in the neighborhood. So however they saw the miracles of God, they saw the miracles of Christ, they come to the understanding that we ought to bring him to Christ. You see, some people will bring you to Christ, but will not cause you to know Christ. Let me read again. They themselves, when they brought the blind man to Christ, they did not know Christ in the sense of the knowledge that he has asked to the disciple, who do men say that I am? And some did say you, you are the John the Baptist. Some did say that you are one of the prophets, Elias. But he says, who do you say that I am? So in that word, the Lord is speaking unto us something very important. He does not want us to just bring people unto him, meaning, quote-unquote, evangelism. Hallelujah. Oftentimes, in, uh, I say, not just uh, is the word. He does not just want us to bring people. He does not just want followers. He wants what? Disciples. Because he wants disciples who do know him, who do know his heart, who do knows his understanding, his will, in order for them to fulfill his good pleasure. So the Lord will ask unto the disciples, he said, who do people say that I am? Oftentimes we come to the Lord by the knowledge of what we heard from somebody. Which is good because at the end of the day, the Bible says in the book of John chapter 8, it says, and to the Jew who believe on him. Amen. What did he say? If you, if, if you continue in my word, what? Then, can you, can you put it up for me? Then you want me to put it on me, um, for me. John chapter 8 from verse 30.
Can you read that for us, please? We have it on the screen. Amen. Thank you. John chapter 8, verse 30. Mm -hmm. As he spake these words, uh -huh. many believed on him. As he spake this word, many believed on him. We do know that faith comes by what? By yes. What we hear. And the, what we hear comes from the word of God. Hallelujah. So believing is a manifestation of what has come in your heart. Believing that Christ he is. And then you start following him. You get away from the sins that you have. And you make him as your Lord and Savior. People may come unto him for two reasons. One, the first reason is because they know that he is a deliverer, he is a Savior, he is a helper. Just as the man who was brought unto him, they know he was a miracle worker. Hallelujah. For the Bible says that there were some people who were following Christ. Uh, some of the thousands who were, uh, who were following Christ, the Bible said what? That they were following him only why? Because of their belly. Hallelujah. So he, though they follow Christ, they did not follow Christ out of the purity of their heart. They only follow Christ out of the belly. What they can get from Christ. Now, Christ is a good God. He's a good father. He will not deny unto you things if he sees that it's good for you. But the purpose of us following Christ is not only for us to receive. It's to give. Go back to the word, please. It says, as he spake these words, many believe on him. Continue, please. Verse 31. Mm -hmm. Then said Jesus to those Jews which... Then the Lord Jesus said to those Jews who believed on, on him. him. What? If he continue in my word. If ye... Continue. If ye continue, continue in my word, word then what? Are he, are he my disciples indeed? And? And he shall know the truth. And? And the truth shall make you free. Uh, hallelujah. Amen. I oftentimes say uh, uh, to, to get some time the word of God, I, I, I like to read it backward. Let's start with the last verse. For the truth to make you free, you must do what? You must know the truth. For you to know the truth, you must do what? Let's go back. You must be a disciple. For you to be a disciple, you must do what? You must continue, not know the word. Continue. Hallelujah. Continue in the word. The transformation that has happened in your life the first day as you have opened your heart to Christ is not there that it stops. Hallelujah. There is a continuing into the word that qualifies you or that transforms you into being a disciple. That's what the word of God says, that, that we are transformed. Hallelujah. It says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17, it says, those who come unto Christ, they are no longer the same creature. Hallelujah. The whole things have passed away. So there is a question that oftentimes in my mind. Just as the man who brought the blind unto Christ, who knew that Christ could do something, but yet did not know Christ as he was revealed. Still, this did not prevent them to come to Christ. So the first step is definitely to come unto him and to believe the word. Hallelujah. In order to follow his ways. But we don't stop there. We ought to continue in that word. And the word for continue here is being transformed and become. That's why he tells unto the blind man, first and foremost, he holds his hand and does what? And brings him out. Hallelujah. He brings him out from the things in which he was, from the place and circumstances in which he was living that caused him to be. He brings him out, then operate in his life, and then tells him, I do not want you to go back. So he has an encounter with Christ. And when he has an encounter with Christ, his eyes open like many of us. 
In the first time when we came to the Lord Jesus, we had that the fire in our heart, that desire to serve him and to do all the things that he wants us to do. And as time goes by, amen, as time goes by, we oftentimes lose the sight of why Christ in the first place loved and called us. So the Lord, we have the disciple. Because remember, he called the disciple and he said, follow me. But then down the road, he asked them, who do people say that I am? So after the call, after the call by the Lord Jesus, there is a time when he asks you, who do people say that I am? You see, Peter and John, they came unto Christ because they heard who said that. John the Baptist. John the Baptist, there were some of them were the disciples of John the Baptist. And they heard him saying oftentimes that there is one who is coming after me, but who is before me. And that one, when he comes, he will take away the sins of the world. So when they see him coming, he said, this is the Lamb of God. So they follow him. And as they follow him, they still don't know him. They're discovering him. But as they continue in him, as they continue in his word, as they continue in his ways, then they get to know him. Give me back John 8. John 8.30. 8, John 8.30. Mm -hmm. As he spake these words, many believed on him. Mm -hmm. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. So, uh, I often say the last uh, condition sine qua non. If there is a if, there is a then. And you cannot have a then unless you fulfill the if. And the Lord Jesus says, if ye continue in my words. There are some of the knowledge of Christ that he needs to drop inside of us in order for us to fulfill and to continue to please him that cannot happen until we are continuing in his word. So the disciples to come back, they were followers of Christ and they were with Christ. And the Lord, we asked them right after the miracle, he said, who do people say that I am? In another word, why do you serve Christ? Why do you follow him? Why, why, why do you serve Christ? Why do you follow him? If that question is not answered properly, you will follow him because people say. Hallelujah. You will follow him because you saw a miracle. You will follow him because it feels good. You will follow him because there is a great experience in him. You will follow him because there are something that you see that you would like to have. But then after you follow him, you go to your default and the word of God does not continue in you. And when the word of God does not continue in you, it is impossible to be set free. Because you cannot know the truth. There is a sister who spoke with me. She has been a child of God and, um, for, for a while, for a long time. And she came in the United States a while ago. And as she came, she started now listening more of some of what we call today the New Age doctrine. And she started listening and listening and listening and listening and listening and listening. And now she came to a place now she started doubting that actually the word of God really, really intended to say that the events of Noah actually happened. She started saying, okay, I don't really think that uh, truly, you know, that really happened. I said, okay. I said, what about revelation? What about the fact that the Lord Jesus says he's coming back? She said, well, this is a, a way of speaking. It does not, he, he, does, he does not really come back. And I say, ow. She says, well, I actually, if he really comes back, he only comes back for individual people. Because when you die, then he came back for you. I said, but what about the word of God that says that uh, he will come all out, we see him, and then the dead and the, 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 the living will be, what about this? She said, no, this is just a way of speaking. It's, it's like a, a, a way of uh, uh, imagination. I said, ha. Huh. 
And then I said, but what else you believe in the word of God and you don't believe in the word of God? She says, well, I don't need the word of God in order to continue. I said, huh? She said, well, because she hear God himself, so that's enough. I said, huh? And I said, but if the God that you're hearing tells you something that is contrary from what he wrote, then you know you are not hearing God. She said, but you, you know, he's not only Christian who has, and now she's a Christian. But she said, he's not only Christian who had the revelation of Christ. That Buddha knew Christ. I said, ah. That the Muhammad prophesied from Christ and that he spoke from Christ. I said, wow. And I asked her, I said, but do you know that Muhammad did not hear from God? She said, no, he did. I said, but do you know that if he truly did, it will not contradict the cross? It will not contradict the sacrifice on the cross? It will not contradict Christ dying on the cross? And she said, also, I said, go, look into the Quran. Muhammad believes and says that Christ did not die on the cross. And the word of God tells us in the epistle of Paul that if Christ did not die, then our faith is in vain. And the very thing that makes our faith stand, Muhammad didn't believe it. And he refuted it. But she believes that Muhammad was truly from God. And I say, how do you get somebody truly from God but contradicts the word of God? And as we were speaking, my heart started breaking. My heart started shrinking. And I started remembering the word of the Lord that says in the book of John chapter 6 that the disciple who walked with Christ, they came in a place in a time where they walked with him no more. And my start, my heart started being heavy in my spirit. And I said, but Lord, what happened? What has happened? Then he reminded me because people lack to continue in his word. To continue in his word. Somebody was saying that sometimes we go to church and then we have a great experience, but we have no continuity of the experience of God. It comes like a sporadically where time and time to time and time to time to time based on where you at. But there is a lack of continuance. So thinking about that sister, I said, Lord, what is the thing that has triggered? And he again said, because my people do not continue in my word. The transformation that comes from inside, the touch of Christ that comes and that touches us from inside is what makes us be born again. But when we are born again, we are looking unto the kingdom in which he has called us to. And by looking unto the kingdom, he says that we are to let our mind to be set where? On the things above. So by continuing into the word of God, we also do receive from him the knowledge of truth. And as we receive the knowledge of truth, we are set free from the knowledge of men. So the disciples saw the miracles. And then Christ says, now that you have seen that I can do those things. I can multiply the fish. I can multiply the bread. I can raise the dead. I can heal the, 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 the sick. I can uh, raise the, the lamb. Cause the lamb to walk again. The lamb to walk again. I can give back sight to the blind. But after you've seen all this, after the experience that you had, after the experience that you had, after the testimony of what you saw, after the things that you saw in my hands, now, who do you say that I am? And that's what I hear from the Lord today for us. Who do you say for you that Christ is? Because once we tell that he is our Savior, he is our God, he is our Lord, then it comes with also the implication of continuing in his word. For he says, if you love me, do what I say. How do we do what he says unless we know what he says? How do we know what he says? Unless we continue 
in his word. If you remember the book of Joshua, how Joshua called the people of God back unto him. And the Bible says when he called them, he called all the Israelites who were children of God, who were in the covenant. When he called them back, he says, I perceive in your life that you are not continuing into the promises, into the will that the Lord has spoken. So he calls them, but there were still elders, there were still priests, there were still high priests, there were still servants, but he called them. And he asked them by saying, choose you thee today who thou shalt serve. When we continue in the word of God, there is a desire that never leaves to always serve him. That's the first thing. To always obey his word. To always seek his word. To always seek what he says. And by, by, by having that desire deep inside of us, it makes us realize that indeed, like Peter, to whom shall we go? You know, I will sometimes say this. I say, the word of God, or God can speak through anyone. God does not need a person to be his child in the sense of saved or born again in order for the him to speak through him. And I say this, we had a donkey, right? Who God calls to speak. We had Balaam. Hallelujah. Who spoke. For us as children of God, what makes us different from what we see around and what we see in this world is when we continue in the word. For it says, if ye continue in my word, then ye are my disciple indeed. Give me back the word, please. John 8, 30. John 8, 30. And as he spake these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if he continue in my word, then are he my disciples indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. So there is a clear difference between believers and disciples. There is a difference between followers and disciples. According to Christ, disciple is the one who continue in his word. And as we continue in his word, what is continuing in his word? Whatever you read the word of God, you pray with the word of God, you, you, you meditate in the word of God, that makes you be transformed and changed. And the will and the father, the will of the father inside of you does no longer becomes just a permissive will, does no longer become just a secondary will it does not become just a good will it does not become just a an acceptable will but it becomes a perfect will that you seek so the lord is asking us who do we say that he is what is the revelation that we have personally received from him? When I was younger, my mom taught me into the ways of the Lord, telling me that Christ was Christ and then so forth. So I was brought by that knowledge. And then I came to a place where I said, Lord, reveal thyself to me. So that I do not speak of you as a hearsay, but I speak of you as a eyewitness. As a first-hand witness. So the Lord is 
doing the same thing in the life of the disciple by saying, you have come unto me certainly because John the Baptist spoke. You have come unto me because you heard certainly somebody speaking. But now I ask you as a eyewitness, as a end, first end witness, what do you say that I am? With that question comes a burden. With that question comes a responsibility. Because by the time you answer that question, you have to fulfill the principle of continuing into the word of God. I, speak, I spoke with a brother who said when he was young, his mom taught him in the Catholic church and he knew baptism, catechumena, first communion, and all those things. And then he said this. He said, but today uh, I, I pray, I, I pray, you know. And I asked him, I said, but which name you pray when you pray? To who you, do you pray? He said, but, you know, there is, a, there is a creator. I said, okay, but what's the name of that creator? He said, well, there is no need for that creator to have a name. I said, but that's not what the word of God says. What is the name of the creator that you pray? He says, no, he's, he's spiritual. And I said, but my brother, uh, is there somebody that you pray? He said, yes, that he prayed just to the creator. And as we were speaking, he, he said, if you want to call him God, and I said, why, why even, even the, 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 the God comes out of your, your mouth like a wit, which, eh? with such aggression. Or other people will tell you, they would say, we don't want to hear the name of Jesus. We don't want you to talk about, about the, the Jesus Christ, just like a disciple were, were told by the Pharisee. We do not want you no more to again, no more. To speak of the name of Christ. When you continue in the word of God. And your job tells you not to speak of the, of the name of Christ. Hallelujah. You have only one choice. Amen. You have only one choice. Either you follow what your job tells you. Or you follow what your Lord tells you. But you cannot do so if you do not continue in the word. The Lord speaks unto us and speaks of us of fruit. To see fruit worthy of repentance. Why? Because they will know us by our fruit. So you and I being the children of God. You and I being the children of God. What do we have in us? That I say in us. That makes us different from those who are in the world. In us. How often do we continue into the word of God? Because when I still remember my brothers and my sister who spoke to me. And I remember their words and I remember what they were saying. And I remember how they were fighting against the same word in which they claim believing. My heart was Shattered. And I can only imagine the heart of God looking at his own children, giving them the word of life, and still they dispute that same word that he gave them for them to leave. If ye continue in my word, ye are my disciples indeed. There is nothing better than to continue in the word of God. There is nothing that better than to be transformed, to be kept by the word of God. Give me back the word, please. Verse 32. 
Verse 31, sorry. Verse 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on give him. Me, give me that in the Amplify, please. Mm -hmm. John chapter 8, verse 31, Amplified. So Jesus was saying to the Jews who had believed him, if you abide in my word, continually obeying my teachings. Hallelujah. Amen. If ye abide. abide. Amen. Amen. Abide is not a you come in, you stay, and after you go. Abide is you continually stay in. So it says, if ye abide in my word, continually obeying my teachings and living in accordance with them. So continually obeying my word, teachings, teachings and living in accordance with them. Then you are truly my disciples. Hallelujah. You know, that was one of the words I remember I went in a church. And the man of God was uh, sharing that word. And I was listening to him. And something clicked in my spirit. And I said, you are not disciple of Christ because you say so. You are only disciple of Christ because he says so. And then he only qualifies you as a disciple when you have fulfilled what he said that qualifies you as a disciple. And something clicked in my mind and I said, whoof. And I, and I heard the same word that says, if you love me, do what? Obey my and I click in my mind, I says, woof. And I start remembering words. And I thought to myself, I said, my Lord, anytime we say we love you, what does it mean? He said, the, <laughs> Lord Jesus, somebody say, help me, Lord. <laughs> say, help me, Lord. <laughs> Whenever we say, Lord, I love you, what does it mean for us? For us, it feels like it is a love that I tell to my wife or to my husband or to my... No, 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 no. For him, he says, if you love me, then obey. In other words, for you to know that you love Christ, hallelujah, is how you follow and obey his word. Hallelujah. And I started seeing in my heart, I said, ah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because I want to tell you I love you like I would tell to my friend, my mother, my but it's not that. Because you know, as children, you can disobey your parent and see say you love your parent. But with Christ, he says <laughs> Hallelujah. He says, if you love me, you will obey. Because the, the, the expression of your love is tied directly to my word. Anytime there is a separation between my word in you and your love for me, then you don't love me. Let me put it this way. There is a church that is called the Church of Bati something. I forgot the name. They're, they're closed now. But in 2020, 2020, 2020, in terms of COVID, a man went there preaching, uh, I mean, a street preacher. He went before the church and then he started, you know, telling them, repent. Now, he, 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 he's, he's telling to the church to repent. <laughs> the reason for it is because they put on the front of the church the, uh, the pride, the gay, uh, the gay uh, flag. So as he was still talking, two pastors of that church came out and he told them, why do you say you are a church of God and you support such an abomination? And then they say, but Jesus Christ never said that he was not wrong to be a gay. 
He said that Jesus never said out of his mouth. And then the guy told them, he says, but Paul, said, and then the guy said, no, I don't believe in Paul because he was not a child of God. You know, whenever a person starts disputing the word of God, then you have trouble. So the guy said, okay, if, do you believe that Christ and the Father are the same? He says, yes. He said, but so, it means that if you believe that they are the same, did the whole testament talk about homosexuality? The guy said, but that's the whole testament, that's past. He said, but if you believe that the whole testament is past, then what do you believe? He said, he believed John 8. Uh, uh, no, John 3, 316. Hallelujah. Which is one of the only things that many only believe as they continue in their sin. And then he said, for God so loved the world that he gave his... And then the man asks him, he says, if you have Christ in you and you claim you have Christ in you, do you know that Christ will lead you in truth? And then he's like, but Christ never said, and he kept on repeating, Christ never said that homosexuality is not right. And then he told him, he said, but brother, Christ said in the beginning, he created our. He created them male and female. So he reaffirming what the whole testament said. And the man started disputing, disputing he did not want to listen at all. Because he was comforted in his sins. The word of God said that the Holy Ghost came for, for, to, to, for judgment to convict us of sin and of righteousness. So as we walk in Christ and then we want to please Christ, there will always be a, 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 like, like, like part of our lives where he will shine his light on for us to be transformed. And that man do not want to listen at all. I believe a few months after or whatever, they how to close the church altogether. Christ said, if you love me, you will obey my word. He said, if ye are my disciple, you will continue. Give me the word again. So Jesus was saying to the Jews who had believed him, if you abide in my word, continually obeying my teachings and living in accordance with them, then you are truly my disciples. A disciple has a desire to see his master. A disciple has a desire to be with his master. Here's a question. How many times do we desire for Christ to come back? Hallelujah. A disciple has a desire to see the rule of his master. The disciple has a desire to only see the word of his master to be fulfilled. When I think about that sister I was speaking with, she said, what people are doing right now by giving a choice to a woman to commit abortion is the right thing to do because after all, a woman has right on her own body. And I asked her, I said, but what about the child that is inside? Is that a person that is different from the woman? Or is that a person that is same as the woman? Like there is nothing inside. And she said, as long as a child is inside, the woman has the right to terminate the child. And I said, and the law is saying that they want to push that until the day of birth where the child, after the child is nine months old and he's born, within the five, within the 15 minute after the birth of the child, meaning the child is born, and then within the 15 minute, the woman still can't have that child terminated. 
And I asked her, I say, what do you think? And she said, well, that's a choice. I said, okay, I get that's a choice because everybody has a choice to commit sin or to commit murder and to commit whatever. That's true. Everybody has a choice, just like a Cain has a choice. But what do you say? Is that a right choice or is not a right choice? She said, after all, is the love of God that is prevailing, that if the woman wants to kill a child, God will love her anyway. I said, okay, okay. I said, but do you see it wrong or right? She said, but it's, a, it's right because it's a choice. And I asked her, I said, my sister, do you truly believe in you that Christ does not care about the life of that child? She said, well, if it is rape, the child can be uh, terminated. I said, but, I said, life, life is not valuable based on the circumstances on how that life came about. Meaning, this is not called a child because that person, the husband and the wife, or the men and the women who came together love each other in order to want a child. No, it's called a child because he's inside. So whether it was a adultery, whether it was, I would call it, um, rape, whether it was, whatever you want to call it, it is called a child. Do you truly believe that that child has no life? And she says, no. And I say, but you love, Christ, you love God, you love Christ. She says, absolutely. So this brings me back to this word. If you love me, you will continue in my word. I don't think that she did not want to love Christ, but I only think that she did not continue enough in the word. So that the doctrine of this world has twisted her understanding of the will of God. Give me a back and let's finish. So, so Jesus, go ahead. So Jesus saying to the Jews who had believed him, now, if I want I want to know something. Does Jew, are there the Jew only, is he speaking to, or is that a word that speaks to all of us? Amen? So he's speaking to all of us. For he says, my word are spirit and life. Hallelujah. So he's telling us, after we believe in him, if what? If you abide in my word, continually obeying my teachings and living in accordance with them, then you are truly my disciples. When the Lord has summarized the law and the prophet, what did he say? They are, which are, love God and love your neighbor. Hallelujah. How do you love God? How do you love God? By obeying his word. Because he says, if you love me, you will obey my word, right? And how do you love your neighbor? Well, let me tell you, by obeying the word. Yes, because you love God by obeying his word. And you love your neighbor by obeying his word. Hallelujah. Because he says, for instance, he says, you cannot hate your neighbor you see and then love God you don't see. Hallelujah. And in the word of God, he talks about adultery, he talks about fornication, he talks about lying, he talks about stealing, he talks about murdering. Hallelujah. So if you, if you obey that word, who you not going to murder? Your neighbor. Uh, amen? So by not murdering your neighbor, eventually you start loving your neighbor. So for us, children of God, saved by grace through faith. 
we are not exempt from continuing into the word. A man was preaching last time, and then he said this. He went to a place of uh, what they call pride, pride something, where a group of people come to just, uh, actually, the word that they chose to talk about what they do, they call it pride. And they are even joyful to tell to the world that that's what they do. And they feel complete with themselves. Prideful. So a man went there. And he was speaking with the crowd. And the crowd was around. And they were disputing against him. Yes, God made us this way. That's why we are that way. And the man told them, that's a good lie that the world has taught you. God did not make you that way. The Bible says he made you according to his own image. However, your choice of falling into that temptation caused you to become that way. And as he was speaking with the crowd, you can hear a lady in the back cursing at him and screaming at him and cursing at him. And the guy continually spoke. And continually with calm, continually spoke the word. And at a moment of time, you see that lady with uh, anger, with uh, demonic, you know, manifestation finally come down and listen to the guy. And now you see the whole crowd listening to him with a fastening listening, trying to figure. And as he started sharing his testimony, how he started sharing how he himself has been also tempted in the same area they find themselves out. And they start now looking and listening at him. And finally, I believe some of them went away and gave their, Christ, their, their life to Christ. For him to be able to share that testimony, he ought to be changed. You may share a testimony with somebody else while you not change. That's not a testimony. Hallelujah. That will be like... Um, a report, if you want. Because when you testify of something, when it comes to Christ, when you testify of something, when you said, this, I met Christ, it changed me. And two days after they find you, you do the same thing. The Bible says, because of the children of God, the world blaspheme Christ. That word pounded me and I said, I will not be counted among those whom because of the world, because the world will anyway blaspheme Christ anyway. But it says, because of the deeds of his own children, the world blasphemes Christ. So when I see pastors, preachers, servants of God, evangelists, when I see apostles who corrupt the word of God, there is one in our course. He said that you can sleep with all the women of the church. That's fine because David, <laughs> because David had that anointing. To this day, people are still following him. And they truly believe that this teaching is proper. And you can see, there, there is another one who said, he said, if, <laughs> they call him Makoso. He said, he said to one of his daughter, spiritual daughter, he told her, she came to him and she said, ah, there is a married man who wants to be with me. So she went to ask him advice. And he goes openly and he says, if a married man wants to be with you, that's fine. That means he has already good knowledge of how to take care of a woman. 
All you got to do, take the money and bring your tithe. And when I heard that, I realized that in our lives, we have a desire for sin. Unless we continue in the word of Christ, it is not possible for a man to be set free. For he said, you will be my disciple and you will know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Regardless of whatever you are not free of, it is one thing. You have not yet continued in the word. I always said, if you say that uh, 20 years ago I used to pray, it means you have not continued in the word. Because 20 years ago, if you used to pray, by then you should pray even more. Does it make sense? Whatever we used to do for Christ is one thing. But we ought to do not only the work for God, we ought to do the work of God. Lift up your hands and say, Lord, help me continue in your word. Lord, strengthen me to continue in your word. Lord, help me to love your word. Lord, help me to be transformed by your word. Lord, help me. To be changed by your word. For you who are watching whatever you are right now. You may not be here. But whatever you are. Christ sees you. Whatever the state of your life right now. Christ sees you. The love of Christ does not exclude the fact that he wants you to be transformed and changed. The reason why he loved you the way you are is like the woman who was caught in adultery. He loved her. Delivered her set her free and told her, go and sin no more. There are things that you may want to do in your life that you know are not the will of God. For you to step away from them is not by your own strength. It is by the strength of Christ. But for you to have that strength of Christ to deliver you from those shackles, what you need is to continue in the word of Christ. For you to see your life being set free, you need to continue in the word of Christ. When you continue in that word, that word will cause your heart to be in the knowledge of truth. And that truth that you will receive will set you free. I pray, Father God, that for each one of thy children, for us, each, each one of us, I pray, Lord God, every area that needs a separation, that the separation be established, the separation be done. I pray, Father God, that every area where there is a dead spot, every area where there is a blind spot, Every area where there is a lame spot, I pray, God, that you touch and shine your light there. For you have come to redeem the world. As I'm praying, Lord God, I have in my mind my brothers and my sisters who are struggling with their own faith, who are struggling in believing 
your word, who are struggling in following your word, who are struggling with addiction, who are struggling with lies, who are struggling with pornography, who are struggling, Lord God, with impurities. I pray, Father God, for my brothers and my sister who are struggling, Lord Jesus, with adultery, who are struggling, Lord God, with the vice of this world. You say it as we continue in your word, your word and your truth will set us free. I pray for those who are struggling with the doctrine of demons. I pray for those who are struggling with the new age doctrine. I pray for those who are struggling with the philosophy of men. I pray for those who are struggling with the love, the love of the things of this world and the lust of this world. I pray, Father, that you penetrate your word in them. For you are able to separate us from the things that are causing us to fall. And your word says that the whosoever that the Son sets free is free indeed. I pray, Father, that your hand touches every area of our lives where there is blindness. Just as the blind man that you pulled out in order to give sight and for him to look up on thee. I pray, Father, that the, your children look up on thee at every situation, at every moment, at every place. I thank you for your hands upon each one of us. I thank you for your hands upon our lives. Deliver your people from every spirit that is contrary to your word. Deliver your people, God, from every spirit that is contrary to your will. Deliver your people, Father, from anything, Lord God, that caused them to be prideful, that caused them to be angry, that caused them to be jealous, that caused them to be bitter, that caused them to be unforgiving, that caused them, Lord God, to not be able to follow your ways. I pray thee, let your hand touch them. Let your hand deliver them. Let your hand set them free. For your goodness has come so that uh, your grace abound much more where sin has abounded. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.